Hello songwriters, I'm Dan Colbert uh, bringing you episode 8 in my series A Songwriter's Notes on Songwriting. Uh, I've been trying to post uh, these every couple of weeks but I missed last weekend because in the space of uh, in three days in a row I had my fifth wedding anniversary, my 60th birthday, and Father's Day so uh, You'll uh, forgive me if uh, for missing uh, last week, but uh, we'll continue now. Uh, I'd appreciate any comments you have on this episode and the series in general in the comments section below. And uh, please uh, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. I um, am regularly posting uh, songs to it. Uh, so up to now, uh, today's uh, discussion is on melody. Up to now, we've been talking about the, the first three main elements of song, harmony or your chord progression, rhythm, and lyrics. And we come now to the fourth and last of these, melody. Uh, this seems to be, in my experience with other songwriters, the... Uh, the hardest one for most songwriters. In fact, I've had a lot of songs introduced to me that don't have any melody at all, really. Um, uh, they almost kind of speak the words. Um, I think this, I think there may be two main reasons for this. One, I think people tend to get intimidated by the countless beautiful melodies that we've all been exposed to in our lives. And they worry that they can't measure up. Okay, so there's kind of that kind of inhibition. Um, the other reason, which is mostly what I want to address today, is uh, because they don't have a, a real approach to um, creating a melody. Um, so on the first one, and we'll talk about that. On the first one, I encourage you to let go of worrying about measuring up. On the second one, uh, again, my hope here today is to make it a lot easier for you uh, by sharing with you my approach, which is which I said early on in this series, somehow gives me my melodies for free. And in preparing this talk, I have some better understanding. I've always been a little mystified and puzzled by that, but I think I have some understanding about that that I, I'd like to share with you and hopefully will help you. But let me first say just a, a few words about the measuring up uh, thing, uh, that inhibition. Uh, so I definitely believe that there are some melodies that are more beautiful than others, uh, you know, just as with any kind of art. Um, uh, there's a, um, but there's a special aspect about melodies and song in general that I hope will kind of encourage you and help you let go of that. Uh, measuring up thing. Uh, the French word for song is chanson, which comes from the same Latin root as the word chant comes from, cantare, which simply means to sing. Okay, so now when I think of a chant, I think of a simple mm, semi-melodic phrase, it doesn't even have to be melodic, that's repeated over and over. To me, that's the kind of char main characteristic of a chant. It's repeated over and over. When it's repeated enough, the ear really gets accustomed to it and accepts it, and it can even become kind of an earworm. Now, I'm not saying that there are no standards for making a memorable and pretty melody, but I think you'll find that the melodies that we know and love have burrowed into our consciousness as much uh, uh, because they've been repeated to our ears a million times as they are intrinsically beautiful. I think, in other words, the repetition of them matters similarly to whatever, however you would define or measure their intrinsic beauty uh, for your ear to accept it and for it to be taken up, if you like. So don't try to measure up to that hit song. Uh, your melody might well be nicer. The trick is for people to hear it a million times. That's actually, in my view, a much tougher nut to crack. 
uh, and is really outside the scope of this series. I'm not very good at, at that. Um, I'm trying to learn. Uh, so we'll talk about how to develop that melody instead of the kind of marketing of it. Um, before telling you about my approach that gives me my melodies almost for free, I want to share with you one uh, kind of concrete stylistic difference that you might notice uh, as you listen to different songs. So I kind of present this as a little uh, challenge or homework assignment for you as you listen to songs. Uh, ask yourself uh, the following question. Generally speaking, melodies tend to be either more horizontal or more vertical. And what do I mean by that? Well, even if you don't read music, you know that notes on a scale go up and down. High notes are written higher up on the staff, uh, musical notation staff, and low notes are lower. It turns out that some people, some songwriters, tend more towards one style than another. Okay. One isn't better than the other, they're just different. Many of us, uh, like myself, I think, kind of are somewhere in the middle or, you know, in one song will be more horizontal and another more vertical. I think I tend to mix it up a little bit within songs. Um, and uh, it's not a conscious thing, it's just more a matter of taste and what uh, comes out of me. Uh, the most so to set you off on your kind of listening adventure with respect to horizontal and vertical, the most iconic examples that I know of this difference is also one of the most famous uh, songwriting teams ever, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. It's one thing that made them such a great songwriting team, whether they wrote together as they did earlier on or apart as they did later. They're just beautifully complementary to one another. Lennon tends to be very, and this is famously known, this isn't my opinion, um, Lennon tends to write uh, more horizontally and Paul McCartney more vertically. So I'm, I just want to give you an example from each of them to illustrate this, and they happen to be two songs that were written almost at the same time and about the same subject, their hometown of Liverpool. Lennon's song, Strawberry Fields, Forever, is about as horizontal as it gets. So I'm going to just sing uh, the opening of one of the lyrics. Living is easy with eyes closed, misunderstanding all you see, right? Especially the first part of that, living, it's, all, it's a monotone, right? So very horizontal. Now, horizontal doesn't mean a monotone throughout, there, there's always some variation, uh, but the predominant line in it is pretty flat, is pretty horizontal. If you looked at it on the, in the music, on the staff, you'd see a pretty horizontal line. Uh, the Paul McCartney example is Penny Lane, okay? And again, a verse goes, In Penny Lane there is a barber showing photographs. Of every head he's had the pleasure to know, right? It, it's bouncing up and down a lot. So I think it's kind of cool that great songs can be made in both ways or somewhere in between. So I just wanted to illustrate that for you as a way of saying um, you don't have to try to be something. There's wonderful, successful songs with beautiful melodies that are very horizontal, very vertical, or in between, and a, or a mixture, and all of that. But it is something that it, ten, it can be part of your personality, okay? As it was for John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Now, this brings me to my main point today. Melody is the freest of these four song elements that we've been talking about. Yes, some melodies are, for lack of a better word, better than others, whatever that means. Mostly based, I suppose, on the arc and phrasing of the tune. But my point is that there's an enormous amount of space to play with melody. It's an infinite space. Uh, it's one of the things that makes music, in my opinion, the most uh, 
wonderful art form that there is. Uh, I think this huge amount of space is one thing that makes people have a tough time with coming up with melodies. How do you decide where to go, what to do in that biggest space? How do you get started? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked because I think I have something of an answer to that. You might think, going back to lyrics, that they are just as free, if not more so, right? Language is just as, as open as can be. But remember, and that's true, but the, remember the big thing, big point I made about lyrics uh, the last time or last couple times. They have to have a rhythm, okay? They have to tie into the rhythm that you've established for the song, okay? The meter, the phrasing, etc. This is a really big constraint on your word choices, okay? Yes, you may have to come up with something to say, a subject, but once you do, your rhythm and to some extent your harmony cut down that space for you, cut down the available space for your lyrics to fit into, okay? So now you may be anticipating what I'm getting to and why I've gone through these song elements in the order that I did. Beginning with harmony, rhythm, and lyrics is like building a space, a home, for your melody. That's really why I get my melodies almost for free. They kind of come automatically once I've boxed myself in with the other elements of song, okay? I hope that makes some sense. You're, by, by establishing these other elements, you're building something of a house for your melody to live in. Okay, and that will, you know, normally we think of freedom as, as uh, a desirable thing to have, but in art, you, uh, you, you can have too many choices and that can immobilize you. So building that house out of the other elements, kind of in the ways that I've talked about, or, or you may find your own ways, and that's, uh, this is not the only way, I don't want to suggest that, but... Um, in some way, building uh, some elements or cutting down that space to some extent will really help you to move forward with the other elements. So let's be start to be concrete about this. Suppose your harmony is just a single chord. Now, I'm sure someone like John Lennon could do something melodically interesting with this. He has a number of good songs with two chords. But there's so much space, just if you have one chord, that... It's kind of a struggle to know what to do with that. But once you have a real chord progression, a melody will start to kind of fit in it like a hand in a glove or a piece of clothing on the body. It's generally, uh, it, it'll general the melody will generally follow the chord progression, meaning that the notes of the melody mostly, not necessarily entirely, but mostly will belong to the notes of the chords you're singing over, okay? Now, to be sure, that still leaves an awful lot of choices available, especially if the melody mainly stays on uh, uh, some note of, of the chord at any given moment. But what I call the kind of the culture of music tells our ear what sounds good or not over these chord changes that we have. So in the last couple of talks, I, I, I talked about these four parts, melody, I'm sorry, harmony, uh, rhythm, uh, 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 lyrics, and melody. I talked about these four parts kind of converging, if you think of sort of four spheres here, uh, converging on each other and meshing together by the end of your process into a completed song. So I don't want to give the impression that the first three elements before you get to melody are done and set for good and then you lay down a melody on top of that. It's not that cut and dried, okay? Uh, I'm always fiddling with all the elements right up to the end. Um, they kind of keep jostling against one another until the whole thing's finished. 
but I can tell you what typically happens for me. The harmony and rhythm usually get mostly set pretty early on, okay? That's where I, you know, what, what happens to me is I'll just walk into my, the room where I do this and pick up my guitar and I'll just start playing two or three or four chords and as I kind of, you know, relax into that, some rhythm starts to suggest itself and I just start playing with that. I may change it entirely um, or I may just go with it. So the chord progression and then I'm fiddling with the chords, I'm, I'm hearing something in my mind that's different from what I'm playing. So I kind of, I use my ear with my instrument to find the chord where I want to go. And by the way, what's going on in my head at that moment is something semi-melodic. It's not a real melody, but it's sort of suggesting a, a sound that I want or a feel that I want to get to. And so I change up the chord progression a little bit. Maybe that suggests a change in the rhythm. But really the chord progression, the harmony and the rhythm are playing against one another, okay? Um, and that also, one thing that does is provide a mood. By the way, it, that doesn't mean that the lyric or melody necessarily need to correspond to the mood established by your harmony and rhythm. One of my favorite things to do is to put sad words, say, to a happy melody or vice versa. Uh, but that can be a consideration for you. I also get at least some of my main elements of meter or rhythm from my lyric uh, uh, for these and, and can start to kind of scratch out some phrases. Sometimes they're just placeholders. Uh, very famously, Paul McCartney has talked about how uh, he used um, the words scrambled eggs as a placeholder for yesterday. You know, instead of yesterday, he sang scrambled eggs, you know, and, and that was just a, a kind of syllabic, rhythmic placeholder for him until he figured out what he wanted to say, okay? Very often, I'll just put do, 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 or some nonsense thing like that, uh, just kind of hum over it, just to get a sense of the possibilities of uh, melody. And I'll illustrate that with one of my songs in just a minute. My main message, though, about melody is don't try too hard. Don't strive for anything, okay? Let it come naturally within that house of harmony, rhythm, and lyrics that you're building, or placeholder lyrics that, that you're building. Uh, because what sounds natural to you is what will sound natural and good to others. Trust your own ear. Um, so let me just illustrate that point with um, uh, how I started out writing one of my newer songs called The Days, and there's a link to the video uh, in the comment, pinned comment below. One day, I, again, I just walked in and I just started playing C and B flat chords like this. sort of soulful to me in some way and I just started kind of humming over it favorite songs of mine, okay? Once I had a few lines of lyrics and a real melody, uh, a real melody took shape over that, over just those two chords. I'll talk more about that song next time and how it came together, both the verse and the chorus from that. Um, so to continue 
my process, my harmony and rhythm are really the first to get in the ballpark of where they end up. Uh, we can talk about tweaks to them another time, okay, but they're almost always the first parts to get close. And, you know, in reading interviews or hearing interviews of uh, famous uh, songwriters, uh, uh, I think overwhelmingly most start with music. And what they mean by starting with mu the music is the chord progression and rhythm of, of a song. Okay. Um, I, you know, by the way, I, you know, I can sit there with my guitar or at the piano and make a pretty complete, uh, pretty complete music with just these two elements. Uh, harmony and uh, rhythm. That's called an instrumental song. That's a strong foundation of a house for the other two elements that are coming, lyrics and melody. So, you know, again, different people do do different things. There are people who start with lyrics. I have, I have a couple songs where I wrote lyrics first. So I'm not... Um, Putting that down, I think, again, overwhelmingly people find it easier to start with the harmony and rhythm, and that provides this uh, good, good uh, foundation. So what's naturally left to work out once you have that foundation is the lyric and, and melody. They tend to kind of move toward each other in this process, but they're not quite equal. And that's why melody, for me, and I think probably for most songwriters, and this is why melody tends to come last. Lyrics and melody inform one another. They kind of nestle into one another. But again, not quite equally. For me, and I, again, I think most songwriters, lyrics are a little bit ahead of the melody. The lyrics tend to take shape first and sort of teach the melody, where to go, more than the other way around, okay? Because remember, the lyrics have a rhythm and a sound which provides something of a template for the melody to attach to. We've all heard songs, for example, some really good ones that were big hits, where the first couple verses go by nice and smoothly, and then in the third verse, say, there's an awkward emphasis on the word the that you know, you wouldn't hear in kind of a natural way of speaking. Um, sometimes the song is just so good otherwise that it can take this bumpy bit in stride, but maybe the words could have been worked just a little more to smooth that out. So again, the, uh, this is just an example of the words and melody kind of pushing and pulling on each other until they end up, if you've done your so job well as a songwriter, fitting snugly together. All four elements will fit snugly together, but typically the last two to settle in are lyrics and melody. Now, coming back to the notion of song as chant, which I talked about at the beginning, um, a couple of weeks ago I marched in an anti-gun uh, rally where there were as we were marching along, uh, as these things normally go, there were, there were call and response chants going on almost constantly. Uh, Non-musical ones, just verbally. One of them, but they, they almost all, out of necessity for this kind of thing, have a rhythm to them. It's simple. But one of them went like this. No more silence, end gun violence. Okay? So there's a a parallel meter in the two lines, right? There's four syllables in each line, no more silence and gun violence, okay? And there's a rhyme to boot. Now, let's suppose I have a, just a very basic one, four, one, five chord progression with a very basic rhythm. Suppose I start to sing these words over it. No more violence, silence, no gun violence, 
No more silence and gun violence. 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 No more silence. Now, you know, I tried to sing it with some variation, but what I hope you'll see is the possibilities are not, you know, infinite for this kind of thing. Once I've established the progression, I have some words with meter to them. I have a simple rhythm that goes with those words. Um, the, the combination of harmony and rhythm and words really boxes you in quite a bit melodically, okay? So I, and out of these variations, I like to sing my songs with some variations in them as I'm singing them, but um, you'll quickly settle on, on uh, you know, some, some definite melody uh, as, as you do this. There's really two other important points that make the melody emerge from these basics, though. One is the rhythm of the words themselves, okay? Um, uh, no more silence and gun violence. You have four syllables kind of that go up and down in an up and down meter in each line. Uh, so, you know, no more silence, and gun violence, okay, goes up and down. These natural stretches push on um, a melodic line or an imagined melodic line in a natural and intuitive way. Uh, and here's the other thing that helps you to develop a, a melody out of lyrics with the other elements at a pretty unconscious level. Just speaking the words, you can hear that the first two syllables are kind of a monotone. No more, right? The, no more silence. The third syllable goes up half a step. I checked it out before, just in the natural way of speaking, okay, before settling back down. If we tried the whole line on the same note, no more silence. It sounds robotic, right? It's not natural. It's not a natural way to speak. So what I'm trying to tell you is just in the speaking of your lyrics, you already have a little bit of melody, okay, just from the spoken word. English is not a tonal language like many Asian languages are, but it's not altogether without tonality. This fact, a, a little bit of tonality in the natural way of speaking, will also inform and drive your melodies. I promise this, okay? I promise that that's what will happen. So just get in there and do it with your uh, chord, with the other three elements, okay? So build that house for the other three elements and great things will happen for your melody. Next time, I'll look at some examples of these ideas and approaches using my own songs, since I know how they came together. Uh, videos of all these songs, uh, I'll put in the pinned comments below. I hope you'll have a listen, and uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until next time, keep at it and stay in tune.